People know magic isn't real, or so says Michael Feldman, author of Vanishing Ink's latest magic book, The Pages Are Blank. So who is Michael Feldman and what makes him say that magic isn't real? Actually, Michael is a corporate attorney who loves magic so much that he performs it as often as possible and has even published some of his own creations in the past. He performs as an inspired amateur at places like the Magic Castle, the Chicago Magic Lounge, and even for Penn and Teller. He believes in creating impossible moments, but not in asking people to believe in real magic. Instead, he focuses on presenting impossibility to his audiences. And he takes the credit with his sleight of hand ability and witty scripting. He elaborates on his philosophy at the beginning of this book with a thought-provoking essay to kick things off. And the rest of the book is material that he's built up over a number of years and performed at a variety of different magic venues. And if you're wondering about the quirky title, The Pages Are Blank, it is explained in this beginning essay. I won't spoil it here, but his whole thought process and introduction is quite compelling. As we get into this discussion, it's important for you to know that I work for Vanishing Ink. I certainly don't hide that, but in case you didn't know, now you do. I'm going to attempt to keep this discussion factual, but know that I may use my considerable persuasive skills to get you to part with money for a book like this. Enough. The book is 186 pages, and there are 11 tricks listed in the table of contents. There is a hidden trick within the context of a discussion, and it is not called out in the table of contents, so that brings us up to a total of 12 effects with eight other techniques taught. It is hardbound. There's no slipcase, bookmark ribbon, or deluxe edition. Everyone gets the same book. To assist with your learning experience, the book is adorned with plenty of black and white photographs. Indeed, the whole motif of the book is a very noir feeling with a white cover, embossed lettering, mirrored name of the author, etc. Now that we've laid out some of the facts, let's discuss some of the qualitative factors to help you decide if this book is for you. This episode of Erudite Magic is being brought to you by Don's Magic and Books. Of course, Don has The Pages Are Blank in stock and ready to ship to you with fast and free shipping in the United States. But more importantly even than that, if you are interested in older magic books that are harder to find, maybe even ones that you've been searching for for a while, be sure to check out his website, which I'll link down in the description below. He always has good deals, and the inventory is constantly changing, so you're going to want to bookmark this and check it frequently to be on the lookout for those prize books that you know you've been wanting for a long time. I don't know what you're waiting for. Head over to his website, check it out, and enjoy shopping for delightful magic books that are waiting to join your library. What kind of magic is it? This is all close-up card material primarily done at a table, although not all of it requires a table. And the reason for that is that this is the type of environment that Michael Feldman finds himself performing in most often. And what should be obvious after a disclosure like that is that the material in this book is actually part of his working repertoire. So even if it's not your cup of tea, this is tried and true material. But also knowing that, it's just as important for you to know that this is amateur magic. Wait, before you dismiss it, I don't mean that as a diss. I'm trying to tell you that this is different than what you've seen in other magic books. Because Michael is not compelled to earn his living doing magic, he can explore things that he believes push magic in new directions, without worrying whether or not it would be commercially successful for a corporate audience. And yes, he has some traditional pieces in here like a triumph, and it's a good one at that. But he also shares methods to duplicate signatures on playing cards, as well as effects that mess with the internal clock of a trick that most people expect. These are all items that Michael feels could move the ball forward in terms of either the presentation, the method, or some other aspect on which he and now you can continue to build. So who is this for? As far as the difficulty level, this is for intermediate to advanced card handlers. Michael has been performing for quite a while, and as such, he is supremely comfortable with slights like palming multiple cards, culls, passes, top changes, etc. And frankly, there aren't any self-workers in this volume. But on the flip side, don't let this report discourage you or make it feel like this is too daunting. These slights are not as hard as you would expect, and he's even got a discussion at the beginning of his techniques chapter to encourage you to put the work in and you'll see the results. The techniques he teaches range from a tabled double lift to a full deck switch from a wash shuffle on a table. And yes, that moment in the trailer fried me as well. So he does teach you some original takes. However, the rest of the book assumes more than a passing familiarity with the magic literature and slights in general, although there are detailed footnotes that will point you to where you can learn more about a particular slight or other options. He does give you an overview of most of the slights used, but this is not a hold your hand kind of book. 
All that said, you'll certainly get a lot more out of this book if you're already familiar with the broader magic literature and have incorporated more advanced sleight of hand work into your magic. As far as the performance conditions, this is all close-up card material. You don't have to be at a table for most of it, but there are some pieces that not only require a table, but also require you to have advanced access to that table. For example, his deck switch and the associated effect change blind, which was also demonstrated in the trailer. There are effects that require duplicates or cards that are treated with certain office supplies, but I feel like it's equally important to note that there are plenty of impromptu tricks in the book that will work just fine without any advanced notice, as long as you're willing to put the work in to handle the requisite slights. Is it any good? In a word, yes, but let me give you a few more considerations before you make your decision about whether this book is for you. The book is more modern in its presentation. That is, the margins are big, the paper is thick, and the photos are presented in that trendy style of being bigger. In fact, most of the photos are approximately a third of a page, and there are times where there are multiple pictures within a two-page span. Now, I'm not suggesting that there's any padding in the book. It's pretty obvious what you're getting with 12 tricks and eight techniques, but it's just a different style than, say, the magic of Michael Amar. If you compare this book to his previous release with Ryan Plunkett, it's very similar in terms of the total number of tricks, essays, pages, and frankly, price. But the size of the book is different based on the style, which I don't really believe is either good or bad. Even though the book itself is a little more modern and trendy, the presentation of the tricks is fairly traditional. Each trick starts with an introduction about the thought process behind why this effect came into being. The author then describes the effect from the perspective of the audience. He covers any setup that's required, including any arts and crafts. Then he throws you right into the choreography, which is basically a rehearsal or walkthrough of the entire trick. The script, the slights, everything involved. But afterwards, he has two additional sections, which is the presentation, or essentially just the script by itself without any of the slights, so that you can learn the lines without having to filter through all of the slights. And then that is followed by the breakdown, which is just the parts of the trick, the secret sauce that makes it work, so that you can practice just the slights without the script. Speaking of the tricks, I think that they are different enough to pique the interest of the experienced card handler. I'm not gonna walk through every trick, but a couple of examples that might help you make a decision. There's a deck spelling trick that makes sense after he explains why other versions don't make sense that allows your participant to spell multiple times and including at the end, they get to spell the name of a card using a language that they make up on the spot. There's plenty of room for byplay with your participants. It reads as not only fun, but also impossible. And in the end, there's a very surprising climax to the trick. There's a card under glass that uses not one, but two participants' cards, and they keep appearing in rapid succession underneath a glass. His stated goal was to see how many times he could get a card under the glass while manipulating the audience's attention in real time. As you've also no doubt seen from the full performance clip, there is an ace cutting routine with really offbeat timing that's reminiscent of kind of a John Bannon-esque tweak to that internal timing of a trick. And of course, the full deck unshuffling and color change that you saw in the trailer. At the end of the book, the section in tricks on duplicating the signature of a participant is sure to open your mind to new possibilities within your own work. And there's a hidden effect in the introduction to that section that's a full-fledged psychometry routine. The book is $50 at full retail, so the question is, will you find value? It depends on what you're looking for. If you want a book that will challenge your thinking about what modern card magic can look like and how the modern practitioner can present it, then this is for you. You'll likely appreciate the irreverent presentational style of both the book and the trick scripts. I've already shared a flavor of the effects so you can see how this differs from a traditional approach. If you're looking for a big book of tricks to sate your current appetite for card effects, then this probably isn't for you. And if you're a beginner, you'll probably want to wait until you have more experience to add this to your magic library. Michael definitely considers part of the role of a magician to be that of an artist. That is, magic is a part of your self-expression, and that carries over into the book. The tricks are very artistic in the sense that they attempt to be very different from what you've seen before. And the author punctuates the text with his own style of wit, profanity, and sarcasm. There's even a moment in the book that makes the book itself a piece of artistic self-expression. I'm betting that it will catch you by surprise like it did me, and it's only possible within the confines of a book. At the end of the day, this book, while eminently practical and from Michael's actual working repertoire, will require you to put in the work to really make these miracles shine, and certainly paves the way for you to consider your own approach to magical presentations. By the end of it all, you may be wondering whether your audiences believe 
that magic is real. Oh, and if you're interested in other Vanishing Ink books, then be sure to check this out. As always, my friends, I appreciate you watching. And until next time, keep reading.